Hey everyone, it's JP, and I have a unboxing video and tutorial for you today. So, uh, Potomac Bead Companies, full disclosure, sent me this um, one of their subscription boxes to unbox on my channel, and they sent it to me for free. So, as you know, um, so this is their best bead box subscription, and so let's take a look inside. This particular box, this is a November box, and it's called La Bella Epoque. Uh, I apologize, my French is very bad. Actually, I have no French ability, I have no ability to speak French. But this is the, as I said, November box. Here's the list of all the different items that are in the box. What's nice, one of the things I like about this box is they give you a project to do and all the beads associated with the project. And then there's a whole bunch of extra stuff for your stash, as they call it, beads for your stash. And they also give you the instructions for the project. So the project is called the Moonlight Sonata Bracelet. And so, again, they show you what beads you'll need. And the instructions are printed out in these nice, big illustrations. So, very nice. And the other nice thing that I absolutely love is that they separated out all the beads for the project into a little Ziploc bag. And then the extra stash beads are given to you separately. So this is nice because then you're not trying to figure out, ooh, what, what's part of the bracelet uh, project and what's just extra. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and show, um, take everything out of the box and then we'll go through it um, bead by bead here in just a second. Now, in addition, um, these were some of the beads that were included. Uh, the Rivoli's and the uh, the Rondell's were included in the box. So I've already gone through the box and made something. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to make these earrings. And one of the things to note is even if you don't have a subscription to this box, you will still be able to make these because you should, you may have all this in your stash. Uh, the seed beads are mine. These are ones that I included just because I like the color combination better. So, But the rondelles and the rivolis are from the box itself. All right, so let's uh, continue with the unboxing and then I will start the tutorial after I'm done with the unboxing. So here I've laid out all of the items that come for the Moonlight Sonata bracelet pattern. And so let's just go through it. Uh, here they have the first item is the clasp. So here is the clasp and I can take it out. Of, oh, take that out of the bag. It comes with the wire guards there. So, and so here it is. And so this is very pretty. I love this clasp and it's a box clasp. I think is what they are clasp garden pearl clasp. But anyway, so you squeeze the two tabs here together to get it to pop open and there it goes. So you got it open and of course there's the two wire guards. So that's the first item. The next item are uh, five grams of Toho seed beads, 15, size 15. So that's, I believe, these. There they are. They're uh, crystal snow lined. So very nice, very pretty. I'm not going to take them out of the sealed plastic at this point. Mostly because I just spill them everywhere <laughs> and make a mess. Uh, next on the list are the crescent beads. So that's our crescent here, pretty blue color. Uh, the color is milky sapphire. And next are six grams of Czech bicones. So that's these guys here. They're very uh, unusual color. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and open this one just because I really like the look of this. So there's my scissors. And I wanna give you guys a closer look at this. They're hard to see through the bag, but very pretty. They're not quite black. They got little specks of like copper and gold on them. So different looking. They don't look like your traditional Swarovski bicones. Um, and they're not. These are Czech. So different, uh, different maker. 
And next comes more, it's a gram of silver plated wire protectors. So that's this. So this is in addition to the ones that came with the clasp because you're gonna be, from what I can see, um, you're gonna actually be making individual components here and then they get connected with the wire guards here. And the last item are these seven grams of check faceted rondelles. So, and these are three by five millimeter rondelles. So it's the first time I think I've heard of three by five. I usually hear three by four or four by six. Did I get that open? Nope. <laughs> I was trying not to cut the label. <laughs> so, yeah. Get a closer look. And the color is just jet, so just a black color. And so very nice. And that's the project. Now there's still more in the box. So I just went through just these items here, but there is all of this to go through. So uh, let me go ahead and clear off these items and bring out the rest of the items in the stash or in the box. <laughs> All right, so let's go through the rest of the items in the box. So the first item here is six pewter bows, which are right here. Uh, these are super cute. And popping them out of the box here, or box. <laughs> Ziploc is what I meant to say. They are really cute. I can imagine just making some great designs with it. It's got a hole here in the center, so you can um, do, quite a few different things with it. I think they'd be cute to add on um, in a bracelet, make some kind of bracelet with those. And then the next item are Chuck Angel Wings right here, 10 grams. And this item is actually one that I don't know. So I'm gonna take them out of the bag. This is, they look a little bit like crescent beads, but they do look like angel wings, you can kind of see. So very easy to make those angels for the holiday season right now. All you have to do is add on a stack of beads and you got your cute little, little mini angels. You could probably make some cute earrings with these. So, and I love this color. It's a um, crystal AB matte is what the color is called. So nice, super cute. These would make just such cute little gifts. And, all right, down the list we go. And next is Jade Faceted Rondelles, and these are three by fours. So that's these guys here. Let's take a take closer look. Um, it says Jade, so to me Jade's always a lighter green, but these are a little bit of a dark green, that they look almost blue-black on my camera here. So hopefully, I do apologize that I'm not getting quite the color. But they're more of a dark green. Um, they look more like denim <laughs> blue here, but, or a dark, yeah, a dark blue, more or navy, I guess, not denim. But very pretty, I love that. And this is a very unusual item. So the next item here on the list after the rondelles is one fabric covered cabochon, 20 millimeters. And I have never seen one of these before. It looks like a button. And this one's got a hound, hound's tooth pattern, or check, they call it checkerboard. To me, it looks like hound's tooth, though. Uh, so, pop it out of the bag. So, it's basically, a, it's like a button. Um, there's no holes in it, so you would have to sort of bezel around it, I guess, if you wanted to uh, add it to something but very pretty, kind of gives me some ideas of making a little cute little necklace or something, or pendant. And then we have two, whoops, let me get that in frame for you, two resin Rivoli's, 14 millimeters. So these are not crystals, they're resin, so that's different. I hate, again, something new. This is a product that I've um, not heard of before, but they're much lighter they're very, very light because they're resin as opposed to uh, 
crystal. So crystal's got a, more weight to this. This has basically no weight to it. <laughs> but still very pretty, I think. Um, so, could create, so since they sent two, you could create a pair of earrings with this. Next we have some carrier beads. So I really like this. It's called Vintage Copper is the color. And very cute. So, so again, they sent you a pair. So you can make a pair of earrings or something with these. Um, or a pendant stacked together sideways somehow. I mean, you have a lot of different things you can do with it, just uh, limited by your imagination only, so. And your bead stash. <laughs> and next, so, sorry, I guess I didn't show you that. So that was the carrier beads I just showed you. And then we've got a resin vintage drop. So this is actually right here, sapphire gold. This is the resin vintage drop. It's got a nice pretty pattern on it. Wow, the things you can make with resin these days. And again, this is a very lightweight piece made with, I mean, it looks like it could be metal, but um, it's made with resin. And I like the design on it. So it definitely gives me ideas on making um, a necklace with it. So maybe, doesn't quite match with this, but it would probably go great with the uh, the rondelles here and make something with that. And this drop, they don't give me a size, do they? No. I don't know what size it is. So, and I, oh, I do have a ruler. Hmm, I only have inches. <laughs> On this uh, uh, ruler. So let's see how this goes. Um, so it's about an inch in length and about three quarters of an inch in width. All right, next we have some 50 grams of Mayuki seed beads, which are, these are size 11s. So here we go. And so I'm not gonna open these cause I will, we'll just get everywhere. And these are dark blue lined aqua. So pretty color and I think it'll match with the jade rondelles here. Uh, next we've got two pewter bales. So that's over here. And so perfect to make a pendant or two with these. Nice bale. So I bet you could do something together with this here. I think is the idea. And last we have check faceted rounds, six millimeters. So I'm guessing these are fire polish. They're very pretty, um, translucent, light purple. Um, what was the color? Alexandrite is the color here. So nice looking bead. <laughs> anyway, so it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it says faceted round, but to me it feels more like a fire polish. The way, it, just the, the shape of it looks like it's more, it's longer in one direction, uh, but maybe that's just me. Anyway, that concludes our unboxing part of this video. Now I planned on making something using some of these items. So what I'm gonna stick to is items that, so if you don't get the subscription, what I'm gonna do is use items that you probably have in your stash. So I'm gonna use the rondelles and the seed beads and probably the rivolis here and make something using these three items. I might even pull, grab some things from my own stash to add to it. But you know, generally when I do um, a, a design, I try to use beads that I, you don't have to go out and buy, that more than likely you have somewhere in your stash. Anyway, so stay tuned, uh, we'll get to the next part. 
All right, so let's get started on making the earring. As I said earlier, I'm gonna use some of the components from the box. So I'm using the um, rondelles that came in the box. And earlier I said they were jade, but that's actually not the color. That's the name of the rondelle. The color is actually midnight blue. But here it is, here's the packaging. There's the number in case you're interested in ordering just these. Um, I'm also gonna use the resin, uh, Rivoli. So that's here. And uh, I'm gonna supplement and use the um, Mayuki Galvanized Silver seed beads instead of, I was originally planning on using these, of the dark blue lined aqua, just because I like the way the silver pops against the color of the rondelles. They just look really, really good together. So I just decided to make a creative decision and go with the silver. What you're going to do to get started is to, so you want to start with about maybe just a little over two feet of thread. That's what I have here. So it's about not quite two and a half feet, but like two feet and like four inches or so. Um, and you want to pick up 10 of the rondelles and 10 of the seed beads. So basically just do this in alternating order here like I have. And then what you're going to do is go back through the beads and you just want to do this carefully because one of the things, I don't know if you do this, but one of the things that happens to me is I accidentally skip over the 11s sometimes and then I have to go back and undo it. So just to save yourself a little bit of trouble and just got to go slow. So my needle's not very long so I'm not going to be able to get through those but I will go to those in just a second. Hold on to your tail thread so it doesn't get pulled in. You're going to start making a ring. Go through the rest of these beads here that I didn't go through and I'm going to come out on the same bead where the tail is. So you'll get this ring. This is what you'll get. So, And what you're going to do now is tie a knot. So the beads are reinforced because you've gone through them twice. There's and I tie a knot now because that actually makes it a little bit more secure in my opinion. And it's just a square knot that I'm tying. And you'll get this pretty little ring. And just to, just to show you how this works, is this ring is going to sit on top of the earring, and you can see that this fits perfectly well. Um, if you don't have uh, rondelles and you wanted to use a different bead shape, so like a bicone or um, some type of round bead, or you want a fire polish, I would suggest using a three millimeter. Uh, bead and if you don't have three millimeters then what you want to do is you'd have to reduce the number so if you ended up using say a four millimeter bead you have want to reduce these <coughs> excuse me by two <coughs> um, reduce the yeah reduce these to eight instead of ten and what I'm going to do is just go through a few more beads to pull the knot away and you want to come out of a 11 like I am here and I'm going to move these over so they're closer and I'm not reaching over so much so I'm going to pick up five 11s and I'm there's four and five I'm going to skip over the rondelle and then go through the 11 the run the next rondelle after that one and then the 11 so you can see where the thread is coming out Um, and you should get a little ring like this around the little rondelle that you skipped over. And then you're just going to repeat this. So you should be repeating this about five times. So once again, pick up five. Skip this one and then go into the 11, the rondelle, and the 11. 
and do this again. Once again, I picked at five and I'm gonna go skip over the rondelle and then go over my, go over to my 11 through the rondelle and then this second 11-0 um, bead there. And now the last time, picking up five again. Skip that one, go into the 11, the rondelle, and then this 11 here. So we're back to where we started. And then continue up the first three beads in this group of five from this pre from this last round now. So we're starting the next round. So coming out of that middle bead in that group of five, the third bead. And you should get a funky looking starfish here. And we're gonna do it again. So pick up five again. And all you're gonna do is go into this middle bead in the next loop. So we're gonna connect the loops together. This is gonna help create the little basket for our Rivoli. So five, I picked up five, just going into this here. And I'm going to trim this because that is annoying. So just to get that out of the way. And again, we're going to do five. And go into this one here. And if you pull, you'll start to see that it's gonna form like a little basket. So, and I'm gonna pick up five again. Go into this next one here. And last time, picking up five. There's five. And I'm gonna go into this first, that first point where we started this particular round. So now you have part of the basket done. So what you want to do now is this is going to be a little bit tricky because the Rivoli will shift and move, but you want to just tighten around the beads and we're not quite done yet because there's a little bit more to do. So you got one more round to do. So this is what it'll look like once it's done. But we got one more part to do. So this time what you're actually going to do, so you're coming out of that bead, you wanna go into, and we did five again. So you're gonna go into the middle bead again of this last group of five. So there's the five seed beads and I'm coming out of the third bead. And you just want to continue to pull tight. You can go ahead and if you, um, I don't think it's necessary, but you can go through all the beads again and reinforce this. Now this, for this next round, you're going to pick up three. Pick up three and then go into the next set of five here and you're going to go through the middle bead. So make sure you don't count the beads that were part of this, but you just want to pick up, look through this, the five that you added in the previous round. So one, two, and here's my fifth, third bead, or my middle bead. And let's get it. <laughs> I'm having trouble. There's no reason for me to have trouble, I'm just... There we go, there, I'm pulling, I'm keeping the thread tension tight, so. But go ahead and pull that in and it'll start to come together. So once again, you're gonna pick up three. And again, here's the start, there's the first bead, and the second, and then there's the third. And that group of five. So 
So a couple more times and we're almost done. Pick up three again. And again, it's one, two, and three. So you're going into that middle bead here. Once again, pick up three. And here is the row, here's the five, and I'm gonna get into this middle one here. Okay, so last time, um, this is the last loop we just gotta make. So here's the first round. I know it looks really confusing, but this is the bead you wanna get into. That's where we started. It'll make sense as you're working on this, as you're watching this, you might see just a ton of silver. But that is, so here's that group of five, one, two, three, four, five, and then that's the middle bead. And now your Rivoli is gonna be very secure in our little netted basket. So what I'm gonna do is reinforce all of the beads and just to make sure this is tight. Okay, so I've gone all the way around, and this is what you have, and then this is the front. So you can see the Rivoli is not covered at all. It's pretty much the rondelle set at the edge of the Rivoli, which is how I like it. I like I don't like to cover up the Rivoli as, um, as much as possible, so I like to make sure we can see it, just because it's such a pretty, pretty uh, component that just shouldn't be covered up. All right, so I'm coming out of this bead, which is one of the middle beads from this row here of five. So just go through the next two. So you're gonna go down, basically, we're going down this way from the round. And then you're gonna go to the next two, and then the third one, which then is connecting to one of the loops um, here. And then just continue, go through the next two beads here. And then through the rondelle. So this is connected. And you just want to come out of an 11. So I'm just going to go through the rondelle and the 11. And then one more rondelle just to make it a little more secure. So this is what you have, and you're coming out of a rondo. What you're going to do is pick up five 11s, go back around the same rondelle. So we're going to make a loop around this particular rondelle with the five. And I'm going to reinforce this by going back through again. And so just went through the whole thing again, reinforce the beads. Now I'm going to come back up three beads. All right, so at this point, we're going to make this diamond pattern here. So bring that up closer. So this part is what we're making. So this is you. This will look familiar to you. I use this all the time. Uh, so if you well, if you watch me regularly, you'll know it. So now you pick up four beads. Go back through that same bead where your thread's coming out. And then go through the first bead in that group of four we just picked up.
pick up an 11, and then you're just going to go into the next one. Pick up an 11, go into the next one here. And again, pick up an 11, and go into the next two in this case. Or not, uh, <laughs> I think it's because of the angle that I'm coming in. There we go. All right, so here's where I'm coming out. I'm coming out right there, as you can see. I'm gonna work my way up to this one here. And I'm coming out of the one at the top. Now I'm gonna pick up a rondelle, an 11, a rondelle, an 11, a rondelle, 11, and one more rondelle. So four rondelles, three 11s. Go back through just that 11. And you'll get that. I'm gonna just turn it over because I'm left-handed, so it's easier for me to work this way. I am gonna go ahead and reinforce. So go through that first rondelle. And I'm actually gonna pick up three 11s and go, in, go into the rondelle. I'm gonna skip over that 11 there. So you get that, and then go into this next 11, and I'm going to make my ear wire loop. So again, once again, this is, you're going to do the same thing we just did earlier when making this. So pick up four of the 11s, go back through this 11 where the thread is exiting, go through the first 11. Now pick up an 11 and go into the first or the next 11 here. And then repeat, pick up an 11, go into the next one. Pick up an 11, go into the next one. And then go into the 11 there. And I'm going to go ahead and go around this one more time just to reinforce my loop. This is where the ear wire jump ring is going to sit, so I want to make sure this is secure. So, and technically, this is my third go around the beads. So, if you think about it, All right, now I'm just gonna go come out of that bead that's between the two rondelles and it's also that can be that connects the everything together. So this seed bead here, and then go down through the rondelles if the angle lets you, which is what I'm doing here. And then it's three 11s. Skip over that 11 there and Go through the rondelle and this 11 here at the bottom. So you can stop here and if you, you can call it done if you would like. I find this to be a little bit too flimsy. So in order to secure it, I added a little bit more to the earring. And I actually like the way that this looks. I just think it has this nice sort of tiered look that's great. So, coming out of that 11 there, I'm going to go into the next two 11s. So, by the way, it looks like it's difficult for me to get through the beads, and it's only because of angles, because those things are all at right angles. 
the needle isn't always as cooperative, but the holes are not clogged up with thread or anything. All right, so now pick up an 11, a rondelle, and an 11. And what you're gonna do is come, so you see this is our center rondelle. You wanna go to the one next to it and just go straight through it and continue forward. So you're gonna go through several more beads. And that should fit perfectly. And then you just make your way around till you come out this side. So we can add the beads to that side. So to do this, you'll probably want to just go through the beads a couple at a time. So two or three is going to work well. All right, so I'm, I've made it all the way around, and this is the rondelle that I want to exit out of. So, because that's the one on the other side, directly from that one. So again, pick up an 11 a rondelle and an 11 and you just want to go through that bead that's pointing outward and that just will help the whole thing the whole piece here feel a little bit more secure and you'll, you'll notice that it's going to be a lot more secure uh, once you do that all right so now all you have to do is tie off um, if you wanted to go all the way back around you can I don't think it's necessary because there's not a lot of strain on this. This just provides that extra little bit of support. And so what I'm going to do is actually tie some half inch knots between the 11s and the rondelles that are up here. So I just want to get closer to my rondelle. So this is the tricky part is just getting in into position. Because the beads are now close together and they're blocking each other, or blocking the holes anyway for the needle to get through. And I think it might be easier if I just went this way. Also trying not to stab myself as I do this. All right, there we are. I've got through the two. And now tie a half inch knot between that 11 and the rondelle. And then go into the rondelle so the knot gets pulled away. And if you can, come out of the 11. And once again, make another knot between the 11 and the rondelle. All right, one more knot that I'm gonna make here between this 11 and the rondelle here. Now I'm just weaving the thread away from the knot a little bit and I can trim. I'm gonna, I got my jump ring here, so I'm gonna go ahead and feed my jump ring
and add in my loop. And then just going to close the jump ring. Okay, so there are. I'm just going to call these the jade earrings because of the, the name of the rondelle. And here we are. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. So just to give you a little sneak peek, this is going to be the next tutorial. So isn't that gorgeous? So we got a cuff bracelet coming up next week. Have a good day. Bye.